Okay, very good. Let's uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance one more time. Let's start. One here. I pledge allegiance. All right, very good. Um, are there changes to the agenda? Yes, I would like to make a motion to remove to, to adjust the consent agenda. Can I do that now or wait? Yes, please. okay. I would like to make a motion to. Remove the stipend list from the consent agenda. Okay. We're removing things from the consent agenda. I also like to remove the mini grant from CNS wholesale grocers. Very good. Do we have uh, seconds for, for those changes? I'll second and second. Okay, very good. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Both. Okay. So those two changes have been made, those two items removed from the consent agenda. And uh, next we have the live district calendar. Have people had a chance to take a look at it? This is such a great reminder for all of us of yeah. the things that are coming up. And uh, if anybody has any questions about the, uh, the calendar, please feel free. To, uh, to raise those. Okay, um, not hearing any questions about the district calendar at this point. Uh, what, let's move on to public comments. This is our first session of public comments. Testing. There we go. Hello. Hello. There we go. Apologies just uh, for anybody on the stream, which um, actually, now that I've checked, we don't have anybody. Um, <laughs> so the only members of the public that we have are uh, folks here. Any public comments at this time from you three? Okay, so then we'll uh, move on to that and then we'll have our second public comment session later in the evening. And uh, let's go to Amriel and the student representative report. So I know that at the last meeting, you guys were asking about how Otis is going for the students. And I feel like it's still not going too great. It's definitely getting a lot better to work with. But I think that overall, a lot of it is still very confusing, and it's confusing for the teachers as well to try to figure it out. Um, Sports-wise, though, field hockey has a playoff game on Friday, and the girls' volleyball senior night is on Wednesday. And the girls' basketball has been doing a fall league, and we've won four out of our five games so far. Very nice. Okay, well, great, and thank you. Uh, are there any questions for our student representative? Is there any plans for trying to do any more on OS? What is what is the issue? Is it just? I think it's just the fact that the teachers didn't get a whole lot of training with it. With so with the students, we're so used to Google Classroom, which is what we've been using since we were in elementary school, that trying to transition into Otis without like the teachers fully being able to understand it themselves is what's frustrating because like we don't fully understand it ourselves and the teachers don't understand it so they aren't necessarily able to help us with certain things that we're having problems with. Thank you. I can understand that too Amy I, I as a parent went on and it's a little bit more cumbersome than yeah. web to school and not that I've had a lot of training on it either mm -hmm. but I guess 
just like you said, you know, when you Google Clash, we knew exactly. I saw my kid was missing something, but I couldn't figure out what he was missing. So I'm like, yeah. Ah. So it's, yeah, it might be a new situation, but I get what you're saying. Someone was uh, mentioning that Google Classroom is, you know, it's, it's very comfortable now, but when it first came on, there was a learning curve. And oh, yeah. We're probably going to always is for sure. go through that a little bit. Yeah. Okay, well, great. I'm, you know, I'm, uh, thank you for being here. And if something comes up during the evening that you want to ask us about or comment on, please do. Okay, and so then we're on to the superintendent's report. Ruben. Well, we have a lot of dates. Um, next Monday, October 24th, we are going to have the first of the year. Uh, we, we decided that we were going to have quarterly safety committee meetings with the community safety members. Uh, for instance, those individuals who signed off on those grants that uh, the grant requests anyway, letters that we um, regarding safety. So it would be the fire chiefs, the police chiefs, the uh, if there's a different safety manager within the community as well, um, they would be invited to this meeting. And so um, next Monday, I think in the kind of middle of the day, maybe one or, or two o'clock, we're going to have that that meeting. Uh, certainly anyone here is invited. Uh, if you are going to uh, want to come or have more information about that. Okay. More information about that than um, you know, just let me know because obviously if we have too many people come, we'll have a, a different situation. But uh, we plan on going over the fact that uh, we have received a grant, a safety grant for both the middle school and the high school to do some work within that area. So we'll report out on that. We'll um, review uh, what was in that grant and what the opportunities are. Um, we'll discuss maybe some adjustments that might need to take place because uh, even though they were involved in the development of the strategies that we put forward, maybe there are some better things that we can do. Uh, we'll also talk about the number of drills that we've had, both fire drills, lockdown drills, and um, and get some more ideas and about what we should be doing in the future, perhaps planning some larger community-like drills. Uh, we have had some conversations during the summertime about that. And so that's the type of thing that we want to um, continue to do, uh, to, you know, talk about other areas of safety as well. But those are the main, the main uh, topics that we're going to be chatting about this first time around. Uh, making certain that we are on the same page in both communities, Ringe and Jaffrey making sure also that the professional development that we're having at the middle school, high school, for instance, with teachers uh, on safety and with students on safety and so forth, that's happening there, that it's also happening at the elementary schools as well. Um, there is, uh, everyone needs to have the training necessary in order to feel safe, be safe and to act when, if there were to be some type of an emergency situation that would take place. Uh, we have, I sent an email out, <laughs> I sent it out Friday, but it didn't go anywhere. Uh, we had a little bit of a difficulty with the web to school email system. And so then I sent it out again on the weekend because it was fixed and it still didn't go anywhere. So today at five o'clock, I believe the email, a slightly tweaked email now because I had to change some words and dates and, um, but basically the same thing went out to families to talk about a couple different opportunities. Uh, one would be the JRCSD or the district elementary education um, committee. And I don't mean education committee as in the education committee of the school board that we have, but one that um, we started to talk about some uh, structures during last budget season. And so this is to look at, are we doing things the best we can? Are we doing things the most efficiently uh, that you know that we can. Are there better ways to group ourselves to um, uh, organize our elementary schools, uh, utilize our staff, what have you, to achieve the outcomes that we want to see and that our students, you know, need from us to be able to provide to them. And so uh, that's that committee. And so people are signing up as we speak. And then we have another one, which is the athletics committee, which is just really looking at 
uh, facilities. So we have this facility would be a topic. Uh, the fields certainly have been a topic. We've talked about that before in the past about needing to do something with those lower fields at the high school, but to really bring it into a community conversation as opposed to simply just a school board conversation. Uh, the school board, when we bring it to the school board for conversations, both of these topics, um, and, they, and they have both have different issues that we have to be concerned about. Uh, it, we end up, you know, talking about how are we going to fund it? Are we going to raise an appropriate funds like we even talked about tonight? Are we going to um, have taxation take care of this? Is there another way? And I think we owe it to our community to see, especially with the athletics, is there another way? Is there a way to fundraise? Are there people in this community that have ideas uh, in talking with a coach, uh, one of the soccer coaches, uh, I think this past, in the past month, you know, he talked to me and said, this is, these are the conversations we have in the community. Like we talk about these things and people have ideas and they already have suggestions of what needs to take place. And so let's bring those ideas to the table and let's talk about them. Let's see what we can do. Let's build on the strengths of the community that already exists. And then the elementary education committee, of course, if there were to be something cited that we would need to, or maybe we would want to look at um, changing down the road and it involved um, any a change of significance, for instance, um, mixing the schools, integrating kids earlier and so forth. There are a lot of reasons to think about doing that. There are some reasons to also not do that. Uh, we would need to have time to put on a warrant, the ability to change the language within our articles of agreement and then to go forward. So something like that is not a real fast process, even if we did want to make some changes, but we would need to start sooner than later if we wanted to make some of these adjustments. Um, so those are, uh, we'll start this in November, try to go through January, uh, mid-January about roughly have a few meetings if we're um, well on our way, then fantastic. If things look like they need to progress, you know, through the next half of the year or longer, then that's fine as well. But the point of the matter is, regardless of um, where we're at at that time in January, we would want to have both, uh, or at least represented representation from both committees to report to the board to talk about the ideas that are being talked about and. In, um, next steps. Okay. State of the district would be twice a year or to be giving a state of the district conversation, state of the district address. Um, we've done it in videos. We've done it live. We are uh, wanting to do it this time live on the 17th of November, which is uh, Thursday at 6 p.m. Uh, in the location that we typically have our board meetings right now. It's really the best to make sure that we can live stream it at the same time, be able to take questions. It is also the time when our administrators are available uh, to be able to be in that uh, panel discussion so that they can answer questions that come through, whether it be people uh, in the public that are present in person or public in present via live stream. And so I think that will be positive. We have a lot of great things to inform people about. We certainly want to make sure that everyone's understanding what's happening from facilities all the way through our education. And then uh, just a couple of really neat things. We had open house the past couple of weeks, uh, three weeks, I guess, in a row, RMS, then JGS, CHS, then JGS. All of them were very well attended. Um, JGS, very difficult to find a parking space when I got there. I um, fortunately knew that we owned the property that had next to the propane tank so I scooted in there and was able to do that but um, it was very well attended people the, the teachers did a great job everything was set up nicely and it was uh, I think that people were happy by and large uh, we did have some glitches this past week with some of our assessments we just talked about professional learning communities and the importance of making sure that we get those structures down properly and, and get the professional development in there. Uh, you really can't do the, the work of professional learning communities without really solid student learning data. And so um, the middle school, high school had just started to do um, PSAT, use the New Hampshire SAS benchmark assessments and so forth. Um, 
we had some glitches due to the default budget. We did not uh, go and purchase another, our typical round of Chromebooks that we have on a cycle and so forth. So we had some older Chromebooks that did not uh, utilize or would not work for the secure browser that was necessary for some of uh, the assessments. So we do, we are able to go back and we were able to do some makeups. Uh, that being said, it certainly, uh, we lost an opportunity because of that. So um, we're gonna, I do have a grant um, got approved. We are gonna get um, another 70 Chromebooks, uh, hopefully within the next month so that I can put those into the guidance realm and they can utilize that if they need to at different locations and also even at the elementary schools if necessary so that we don't run into that problem again for this year. But it is gonna be an ongoing issue if we do not regularly keep our cycles up. So about every four years or so, the we need to be, you know, on the after that fourth year, we got to replace because um, they no longer work. They work. the 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 devices work. They don't work for that purpose. Um, then, yeah, you you talked about it already. Uh, field hockey this Friday. Field hockey is ranked five. They had a great season. They're playing Messenic, which is ranked four. So they have to go to Messenic. Kind of neat because they're one and one versus each other this year. So, and after that, there's the Harvest Fest. I didn't go to the Harvest Fest last year, so I don't really know a lot about it. I heard it was fun. And so that's going on Friday after that event. Um, and I, I think that's happening down at the fields. Um, so certainly that would be what, six, seven o'clock in the evening, I would think. So if you wanted to show for that, that's this coming Saturday. Oh, sorry, Friday night. Friday night. <laughs> it's from five to eight. Kevin. Five from five to eight. Okay, thank you. And then the last thing I had to mention for tonight, I won't go into right now, uh, just the CTM, CTE renovation project. It's on the agenda later on, so we can talk about it then. Good. Well, thank you, Ruben. Yeah. Are there any questions for Ruben on uh, this report? Good report. Uh, interesting you. to see what these committees come up with. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I, I actually am really hopeful that we get a large number of individuals. Um, I'd love to have committees of 40 or so, you know, to be able to kind of organize them into different groups and get a lot of different ideas. Because certainly if there's any type of movement with the elementary school, that's going to have to be a community-wide decision. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, with the athletics, we know that that's an important part of the educational process. And we know that it's important for our community. It's certainly uh, something that our community values greatly. Um, can we figure out a way to come together with in, with something that we all care about for our kids and do it in a way that's fiscally responsible, that's not going to um, hinder us from being able to, for instance, you know, having having a trade off. Well, we can get this, but we can't get this. You know, um, you know, we want to be able to to do it in a way that makes sense, and we'll see what that looks like. So this is a little bit unusual because we're not in public comment session, but we'd like to give a floor for a question to our former school board chair, Laurel McKenzie. Uh, what is the community consider the um, learning and paying for the transportation of them? My question was if the board would consider or if the superintendent would consider alerting the planning boards of both towns and seeking some participation from them in these community discussions. Uh, there's knowledge and expertise that could perhaps be very helpful. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Uh, it first went out to teachers. It was actually to simultaneously go out to teachers and to um, families, but it worked out that it went out to elementary teachers for or teachers first, and then the families. And so we'll continue that, that opportunity to get people involved in the community. So the planning board is. Are there other groups other than the planning board that you think would be beneficial to reach out to? You can think about that. You don't have to answer now. Just 
but the planning board for certain. Okay. Is there a booster, athletics booster organization? I'd have to ask um, Heather about the health okay. of that. So I'm not sure right now. I think we have had one in years past. I don't know if we currently have one going or not though. Uh, budget committees from both towns might also be helpful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Well, I think it's time then for the consent agenda. And uh, can we get a motion for that? My motion we include your consent agenda, the modified consent agenda. Thank you, Charlie. I second. Thank you, Daisy. Okay. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay, very good. And then um, let's take up the question of the stipends. Do we have a, a motion to approve the stipend list? I'll make a motion to approve to accept the stipend list. Yeah. Thank you, Christine. I second. Thank you, Kim. Kim. Okay, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, so that's approved 600. Zero, zero. No. Uh, oh, 501. Five, five, I refuse myself. Thank that's you. Great. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And then um, we have the acceptance of the grant from the um, CNS Wholesale Grocers. Yes, I'd like to hear a little bit more about it. That's all. Okay, so why don't we get a motion to accept it? I'll make a motion to accept the grant. Okay, and do we have a second? And then how about some discussion? Can we hear from those involved? Um. Yeah, so Timothy McKay, and so we like to use the money from the grant to, um, to pay for some of our equipment that we're going to use for our ro robot, and also to pay for food for our team at um, all the competitions we're going to go to. Excellent. And, uh, I was able to go to uh, one of the competitions. I was over at SNHU last year when you were, I think, made it to the semifinals. Is that correct? Um, it, it was it was an amazing experience. So if we um, get the opportunity to find out dates and times and all of that for this coming year, I think it would be well worth uh, having board members at least be invited to go and, and take a trip. Uh, it was uh, very energizing, very, very energetic. Um, you think of, um, you know, a, a group of individuals with computers and so forth. I mean, it was, it was, it was just really, it was really neat. The other thing that I think is neat is this year, the club has grown. It's grown, it's um, diversified in its attendance as well. So not, you know, which has been, which has been fantastic from my perspective. Um, I'd be interested in knowing how, from your perspective, things are going this year. Um, yeah, so last year we had two members and I think now we have like 11 people in the club. So wow. yeah, a big growth from last year. So we have a lot of people um, from 7th to all the way to 12th grade. So, yeah. And I think it's not just like all boys. It's like four, wait, how many girls are in the club? Yeah, four girls in the club. So. It's not it's just not like it's not like a boys only club, you know. 
Um, yeah, so because we have so many people, we can do a lot more now than last year. Great. Yeah. You're going to need a lot of pizza. Uh, would the club advisor like to share anything about uh, your plans for? It's a lot more chaotic with 11 team members than it is with two. <laughs> and fun. Good. Um, I guess just as another point, um, this is Nicholas Handy, communications coordinator, by the way. Um, the other thing that's been good and welcome about this club is that they um, reached out to me um, in my capacity uh, in communications. They've actually created some of their own promotional material. The uh, most recent Facebook post that went out there was created by the club and distributed. And uh, there are potentially plans to have them create more content on their own. So um, I think they should be commended for also taking that step forward and um, being involved in the actual promotion of their own club. Awesome. Excellent. Can I ask them? Yes, please. Are there any restrictions on the funds? How were the funds solicited? And were they solicited for a specific thing? Like you were saying, it might go to materials, maybe go to food. Are there any restrictions on it? Or is it just an open 750? Perfect. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you for coming in here tonight. Oh, that's true. Yeah, we have to vote to accept this. All right, so all those in favor of accepting the grant from CNS Grocers, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. <laughs>
if you approve it as it currently is now, it is technically incorrect because we have policy JBAA and GBAA that are on the books and reference in the policy. So I don't know procedurally how you want to handle the voting, whether it's a conditional of the approval of the policies or if you'd like to approve the policies first and then insert them into the document. That would be the one consideration is right now. Um, you guys later in the agenda have ACAC replacing, you know, JBAA and GBAA. Should you guys make that approval? So in a year from now, we are told that that might all change as well again. So I'd be more than happy for us to go and actually, uh, if the policy approval of ACAC and the removal or the rescinding of the other two to do that first so that we can then go back to this document and it would be accurate. That would be fine. Have it accurate at least yeah. time being. Right. Right. Yeah, that good. That makes sense. The CTE regional agreement, the discussion there is I don't have any new um, document that has been provided to me. Uh, so I, again, am not interested in a vote on this because I don't have, um, if you've had this on there, you can read it. Uh, the idea is to, um, the changes that were made there uh, are suggested changes that the Commissioner of Education asked the uh, for our regional agreement to be made so that right. we can be eligible or that what he he believes it makes us eligible for uh, being a separate CTE site and, and, uh, and eligible for the for funding, funding for the funding of uh, a new portion of the CTE center. Right. Uh, so we do have some conversations coming up with Jen Kylie, the CTE director over there at, at, that is located at Conval. Um, there are discussions that are a little bit different than what we have been having. So I think it's fine that we should bring them to the board. Um, the conversations that we have that have been had, I have not been part of these conversations yet. I'm getting my information secondhand because I've been sending people to meetings. Um, is that we probably would get 75 cents on the dollar um, for any new construction, any renovating construction. Uh, you wouldn't get anything less than 50 cents, but everyone that has been getting this aid has been pretty much getting the 75 cents. Okay. Um, the idea would be to improve our uh, construction trades center and to be able to make sure that we can do a whole lot more than what we are currently doing right now and to solidify that program within the region. At the same time, there are there is interest that has not existed in the past, and Jen highly indicates that she has data on this that shows that the areas of culinary arts and also uh, cosmetology are in high demand. Um, I think a lot, of, a lot of jobs are in high demand right now, um, and uh, there may be uh, an opportunity for our school to take on those as well, if that's something this board So, So felt. they would be very new directions. For there us. would be an opportunity to do some expansion yeah. during this time frame. We do need to get an architect on board to help us out because this process you know, and we've said we've really do we've talked in the past that we want would like to go forward with at least exploring this opportunity. Uh, we would need to get an architect involved to do a feasibility study um, and see what can be done. And oh, I do know that Conval has an architect, I believe, that's on board. That's my understanding anyway. Uh, I don't think that Masimic has their architect on board, um, but we are going to talk soon to see maybe we can do something in conjunction with one another. The architect, I believe, again, this is secondhand information. I believe the architect that Conval is using is the same one that has done most of the renovations or new construction design of the CTE centers around the state. It makes right. sense to go with people who do that type of work on a regular basis. Uh, we will, I believe, be setting up some visits to some of these new, newer CTE centers. So I have a question for yes. you, and I want to just test to see if, if my understanding on this is correct. Mm -hmm. In looking at the amount of funding for the different renovation projects that have happened over the past 15 years, they vary quite a bit. And many of them are fairly 
uh, large mm -hmm. upgrades. Uh, I saw some in the 13 and $20 million mm -hmm. range. And so the I, I would assume that the extent to which we have a coherent proposal that's well studied and well supported might have a lot of influence over how large of a grant comes to our three community. Mm -hmm. Is that how you think that's accurate? Or? Yeah, I, I think, I, yeah, we, we definitely have to have a very thorough application and that application needs to uh, make sure that we don't have redundancy in the different locations and we you know need to show that we need it and um, we have to have a plan yeah for where it's going to happen and how it's going to happen and um, and then I guess you know one thing was that uh, what we had thought was going to take place with a vote um, we originally thought it was going to be a vote that would take place in all three areas um, and then you kind of Wait, wait to see what the majority is. I believe that it is going to be a site by site vote. So if Jaffrey Ringe votes a CTE center, you know, renovation down, it would still allow the other two to vote theirs in. Or if Peterborough and the surrounding towns over in Conval decided to not vote for theirs, it wouldn't hinder ours. Right. Um, so Okay. Yeah, so that's my understanding as well that I just learned another again a week a week and a half ago. So, so, so I mean, one of the things that you know we need to be aware of as a board is that this is an opportunity whose uh, you know realization really depends a little bit on the energy with which we pursue it, and you know, and, and the degree to which we have you know creative view. It's an opportunity you'll never get again. I don't know. I don't know the how long they're going to do this type of work for CTE centers anyway. I think we're toward the end of it all. Certainly, even if they're going to continue the process, our cycle wouldn't come for a, a very wouldn't long come time. for another twenty and, years. And right? if and if it does pay seventy five cents on the dollar or seventy five percent, I mean, that so, would be that would be so, amazing. So I mean, it, you know, it's it, it's significant. It's not exact. It's not called building aid, but that's essentially what it is. And uh, you know, it's it's something that we should be. Well, it and it's also so it's it's providing um, a a broad broader opportunity for all learners in the region. It also um, tends to uh, CTE centers tend to focus on uh, practical application of the maths, literacy, science, the arts, and so forth, and with a clear focus on workforce development, whether it's workforce development right after high school or uh, informing people's future desires to become engineers or like, for instance, if they're in manufacturing or um, individuals who might want to be going to entrepreneurship, go take a go into get a business degree and then decide that they're going to go into cosmetology and own, you know, centers. And so forth. So there's a lot of different avenues. Electronic game designers. Yeah, electronic or, game designers, certainly. Yep. High tech farmers. And who knows what else? Yeah, agriculture, <laughs> certainly. There's a lot of things. So, you know, it's it's about sustainability of a community as well down the road. That's what this is about. Okay. I have a question. How is it? And maybe you addressed this, and I didn't quite grasp it. But how is it decided what new trades we're bringing in you know you mentioned culinary arts and cosmetology why those two as opposed to say landscaping or mm -hmm. you know I, that's one that comes to my mind or veterinary arts or something like that sure but, sure um well a couple of those or one of those might exist already i'm not entirely sure but the av the root the uh, the, the approach taken is that there's um, data out there that um, whether it be from the community or whether it be from the state level that talks about what are projected work needs in the future and so um, and it, there's a certain score that Jen was talking about it, would, it needing to be at a certain threshold in order to really say okay we can develop a program for this it's not just like oh I want it it's like oh it's needed mm -hmm. and so um, 
we could we could probably get a, a meeting together and, and talk with her more. She knows a whole lot more about that process than I do. Um, but I do know that it's based upon data. Okay. Yep. So in, in, in a sense, it, there's really an opportunity there to the extent that we have the time and the energy to, you know, to jump in and try and explore it. So hopefully we'll have some something to vote on at one point in time. But and, and so you're waiting for uh, uh, the our, our attorney to look this over. Is that the? Uh, no, it was the uh, Convell's. Last time I knew Convell had their attorney looking it over, and so uh, once we had a final draft, um, we wanted to you know bring that over this way, but. In the next couple of weeks, we'll be in touch with them again, find out where where everything is at, and then bring it back to the school board for discussion at the next school board meeting to talk about, you know, what our next steps could be. Okay, great. And then, what about the uh, reopening plan review? Do you want to get to that? Sure, absolutely. Just before I do that, there is, I believe, on November the tenth. I just got this email today, so it's but it's of value to the school board. I can't make it because I'm already committed to going to the Jaffrey revitalizing efforts at the Jaffrey Town Fire Department on the 10th of November. But from six to seven at the building, the construction trades portion of our high school, um, they're gonna have the PAC meeting. So the the group that comes together to that advises the PAC is an advisory committee um, of the uh, the construction trades class, I guess you could say, or or pathway. Some of you, I don't know. Maybe we used to have several board members like uh, years ago. I think Floral's been on it. Um, Jeff Clark of the end. I'm not sure if others here have gone and been taking part of that. I, I, I think, think maybe I, you I, have. I was at the last well. yeah. 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 So it's something that you're invited to. And so that's on November 10th from 6 to 7. 6 to 7. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. And so the reopening plan. So in order to comply with the federal government and with the receiving and usage of ESSER funds, so the CARES Act, the ESSER um, two and ESSER three funds, uh, we do need to have our reopening framework, I think for the next couple of years on our website. And so we adjusted the reopening framework. Um, Nick did a lot of the work here uh, Nick did all the work here um, <laughs> in, in, in adjusting this. We went back and forth on a couple of items, but uh, basically saying we still have the same planning principles and priorities. We still have the same information gathering areas, you know, places that people can go to. Um, we have the important things to know. The living document uh, communication that was in there as well. That doesn't change. It's still part of our approaches to doing things. I think the addition to COVID nineteen resources uh, has some updates to that. Uh, we added our own policies on other illnesses other than COVID, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, so this document talks about we're rec you know we are recommending that people follow the cdc guidelines but we are not enforcing the cdc guidelines now if you want to enforce those guidelines that's a whole different story and we'd have to change that word one word would change a lot of things um but that's been what we have decided so far as to just you know, let people know this is what the CDC says. If you want more information, please go there. And these are the recommendations that they have. We do, however, have some policies on exclusion of students for skill uh, from school for illness. That's usually the 24-hour rule about 
making sure that you're fever free uh, without the use of fever reducing medications. Um, so we have that in there for information purposes. Uh, Nick, on page seven, did you have anything else that you thought was important to know about this or that I haven't covered at this point in time? I think really it was the, the idea is it's a resource. But yeah, we, I mean, philosophically speaking, all the same things that we've had throughout the lifetime of the reopening framework are still there. Um, communication, some of these sections are verbatim what we've been using since the beginning to let people know like we're not necessarily changing our philosophy to how we're gathering information. Essentially, the biggest thing that's changed is we haven't, obviously, if we use last year's framework, we'd have a lot of rules in there in place that we were following that we're not actively um, following right now due to the changes uh, with the CDC. The idea was to utilize links over putting hard information in there because as soon as they update something, we have to come back here, we have to readjust it, we have to do this. This gives us the ability to um you know be a little bit more fluid as we've said with the document from the beginning um there is still language in there that gives the school board obviously the approval authority on all of the rule changes there's a couple sections where it says you know uh, like we are utilizing a lot of links for this document so that changes to cdc recommendations can be automatically updated any major changes will be discussed and voted on by the school board prior to implementation so if the cdc comes and completely blows apart the process that we're used to right now the language is in there to say that the school board would discuss before we just put a bunch of stuff in place because as ruben said in certain cases you need certain people to change how they're functioning you need to you know probably have more conversations with the nurses about their daily responsibilities um it just it, it, it's ultimately just flexibility and then it gives people places to look you know i tried to break it into two different sections so you had specific information about COVID and like if I have COVID symptoms, testing, et cetera, and then just other resources. Um, the state didn't really have much. Um, a lot of it refers eventually to the CDC anyway. So there's just that line that has their full DOE page that has information. And then there's the um, COVID-19 data for the state. And then that has all the interactive dashboards on um, information so that you can break that down and look as you choose. So. It just creates more fluidity, more ability to have things change without having the board have to say, okay, the CDC changed their recommendation again. We have to have a meeting. We have to change the document. It it reserves that for more major things or things that the board, I guess, would need to be major or the you know superintendent in the schools. That being said, part of the requirement uh, for ESSER is that, and again, for those of you who haven't been on the board as, as long, we are paying for the elementary HVAC project through, uh, entirely through ESSER 2 and ESSER 3 funds. And so it is important that we do things um, accordingly to what they, they want us to do. Every six months, we have to review this. Whether it needs to be changed or not, it doesn't matter. We've actually done a pretty good job because we have, we were, we were doing it every two weeks, you know, yeah. for a while, but we need to have it up in here and uh you know if we don't have any changes the next time we, we can look at it in six months and that'll be fine we can just kind of keep on adjusting there are some things i think that we'll probably look at that might you might want to include in here um within the next month or so we haven't discussed snow days and things of that nature so whether we're going to do some remote days or uh you know last year we had a process that we tried that was a little different than the year before and, um, you know, how do we want to proceed with that? It's not tied to COVID per se, but it is still in the whole realm of what the federal funds are allowing us or have allowed us to use them for. For instance, the Chromebooks that we're talking about, I'm getting that out of ESSER 3. Good. I had to spend a certain amount of it on education, um, improvement which you know very in line with the conversation that we had tonight as well uh but there was a certain amount that i could use for um technology that was left over right. okay now where did the extra funds come from originally were they they were federal funds federal funds they're all federal funds and it came the money came from it was a stimulus a, 
I think recovery act AR ARP, right? Rescue two R's, yes, ARRP. Yep. That's right. Yep. So that's where all of that money came from. All right. Well, good. So does this constitute our review then? This is a yeah. review and we'll post it. Okay. At this and point. Are now. there any questions about me? No. I, I, I believe we need to accept this. Sure. Because it's such a drastic version, drastic change from what we had. Yeah. Um, and this does not, as far as we know, does not change working conditions or anything of that nature. Um, so it's just because it's at this point, it's just apart from our own policies that have to do with illness in general, it is information at this point. Okay. And so you're asking us to do a motion on this? Is yeah, that, I think that would be the best. Yeah, I kept, I kept that as a discussion just in the event that you guys didn't like how it looked you didn't like the overall message or anything like that it just gave you guys the opportunity great. to not act as firmly okay great uh, christine do you, and do you want to fight <laughs> so um two questions one this is just a practical question do we still have testing kits do the nurses still have access to test kids in school because <laughs> COVID tests aren't free anymore. So I'm just wondering if we have some. I haven't asked them recently. I know that toward the end of last year, we had picked up quite a few um, that were left over, like they were trying to get, you know, give them away. And so we, I said, yeah, absolutely. So to my knowledge, each school has some, but I know that they've been handing them out. Okay. Um, so I'm sure at least at the middle high school, they've gone faster than at the elementary schools. And my other question is just so we when these links get updated, what's that? When the links, when the information, when the CDC changes its information, um, and so the reopening framework changes, like if the link gets updated, will we be notified of this since we're we're voting on this? I would say speaking personally um if that was something you guys wanted to do we could work on that um obviously the big one would be if there was a major change because obviously if we have to collect data again that requi requires us putting a whole infrastructure back into place that we aren't necessarily as up on right now um if we have more work that the nurses need to do that's a major change the reason for the um the links and things like that is because, for example, say if our county goes from low to medium, mm -hmm. we don't necessarily have things as like rigid. Um, sometimes they'll adjust more minor things. And obviously, if they're scaling back more, there's less that we have to worry about in the event that there's any sort of obviously major CDC change that they're like, OK, we are recommending to go back to what we were doing last year or even the year before. That would be something that definitely would come to the board, and I, th I would think that the board would act on that before it went into place, because obviously that's a huge district-wide change. Mm -hmm. um, if if it's something that the board wants to be notified of and potentially weigh in on as we go through the process, that's I, I guess that would be up to the board. If if things get more restrictive. Mm -hmm. Then I would say we would definitely notify the board. I wasn't. I wouldn't necessarily. If it gets looser, I don't know as though it would matter. Um, but if it gets more restrictive, then we'd want to say, by the way, this information has become more restrictive. We're still only in a, uh, regardless of whether it's restrictive or not, it's still only recommendation language here. But we should have a conversation at the next board level. I mean, the board meeting about. Do we want to keep it that way, or do we want to enforce something that becomes that has been more restrictive? Obviously, if laws change as a result, we have a whole different. We'll have a much faster meeting. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Well, <coughs> excuse me. Somebody would like to make a motion to adopt this. I'd like to make a motion to adopt the reopening framework 
for 22-23 school year. Okay. I'll second the motion. Okay, so you second. Okay, is there any discussion? No, seeing none. Uh, all those in favor, you signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Very good. <clears throat> uh, and we will come back to the district handbook after we uh, do policy approval. Yeah, at, yeah. At board matters, we'll we'll okay. at, we'll talk about that. So, uh, Lisa, Lisa, would you like to give us uh, a little sure. bit of an update on policy ACAC? Yep. So this is the second reading. Um, it is combining uh, JBAA and GBAA as required by the New Hampshire School Board Association. So we haven't made edits to their document. It's pretty inclusive of what we need to be following. So it's pretty basic there. Okay. And uh Now, approving this would automatically rescind the other two, JBA and GBA. Is that right. right? Okay. So, uh, are there any comments or questions? Is, do people feel like they're ready to act on this? Ruben, do you have any input? On no, I think these are good. ACAC was talked at, um, about at the Kidder Conference uh, about Title IX. Uh, again, just the processes and so forth that have to take place. So they, um, you know, alluded to actually all schools have different versions of things, but ACAC tends to be the uh, most uh, recent one change. They said if you haven't had this change or uh, a newly adopted since um, 2020, you need to you need to do it. So if it was in a 2019-20 time frame, which is I think is what we had, it was not. It was it was nice that it was done then. It needed it needed to be done again okay. um, because things had changed. That being said, a year from now we'll be here most likely again with a whole different policy. Could could have something else. Yeah, right. they believe that uh, the Biden administration's um, looking to make some changes with the the current approach to Title IX. Okay. making it a little more streamlined, a little bit faster of a process, um, perhaps put a little more onus ownership or onus on the schools. That's a possibility. Right now, there are some certain, there are certain things we don't look into. Um, it goes back and forth as to the, the breadth of what the school is responsible for. Okay. So then do we have a motion? I make a motion that we approve uh, ACAC and EBB and uh, rescind JBAA and GBAA. Okay. I and, second. And Kim seconds. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Kim. If there's no discussion, then all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Great. And uh, wow, that brings us down to board committee updates. I think we have to do the employee handbook. Oh, that's true. Thank you. The employee handbook, the district handbook. All right. So we've okay. had some coverage of that. I'll make a motion that we accept the district handbook as amended. Okay. And is there a second? I second. Daisy, second. Thank, thank you, Daisy. Thank you, Lisa. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed, we have none, so that's six zero zero. Okay, and now on to board committee updates. 
I can start with the education one. Um, it was a good meeting, very good meeting. Um, we'll get a quick update on MTTSB again. Um, not sure why, but it's always good to hear from Mr. Frazier. Um, tier one for the MTTSB, tier one is the teams are established in all of the schools, both grade schools, middle school and high school. So that's a good thing. Um, they are still the part that they're still looking into, especially the grade school, is establishing behavior knowledge and response plans. Um, and the social emotional learning programs, looking at that, because once they once the problems come up, that's when they'll figure out how to um, kind of deal with that. Um, in the middle high school established here, I already said that. Uh -huh. um, the social emotional in the middle high school is going through guidance and the behavior management system. Um, they're gonna do the encouraging of positive behavior. This is kind of something we, we discussed. Oh no, just kidding. Um, and we talked about looking at um, the data collection of all of this and the learning programs as it goes through so that we can see when they come back to us to give us more data on how it's going and what they're seeing and what they're looking at. And so, um, the tiers two and three, they have the teams established in both all schools again, um, but that's one too where they're looking at, they're kind of waiting only, they only know what behaviors that they're going to be having um, when they actually come up. So they're going to be looking into more programs for the um, universal screeners. And that's the ongoing stuff, TGS, RMS, they're, they're coll collaborating already and things are going really well there. Um, just focusing on um, aligning both the schools and both programs together so that there's consistency between both buildings, common language, common procedures. Um, then we moved on to another one with responsive classroom and both of the principals reported out on using the responsive uh, classroom. They had a, I think we talked about this already, but they had a four day meeting that was well attended, uh, training, not meeting, training on the responsive classroom. And they saw when they came, when we came back from COVID, they saw a lot of, uh, a lot of behaviors due to the COVID situation. And so um, using the responsive classroom, the teachers felt it was a very natural way to respond to the kids and how to get them back on track and help them out. So that was a positive. Um, they are they're they're trying to really make sure that it's driven home and that we stick with the that there it's you need the student, the school, and the parent to all be working together. So that was a good point that we we need all three to work together. So really making sure that the communication between the parents and the teachers and the students all stays open is important. Um, there will be ongoing professional development for responsive classroom. They will be asking the individual teachers um, what they need for support and how they can support them. Um, they'll also, we also talked about, we're, we're gonna have to come back, I think we said in like three months, three or four months, we're going to have to come back together because we talked about training people to be trainers within our area or district so that there are people to go to if more people come on or we need more training there's somebody that's already trained for that here and ready for it um and then oh and then the question we, we talked about this was all in the grade schools by the way so then we talked about how is this going to then be pushed through for the middle high school this does not currently exist in the middle high school and Again, I want to meet probably at the next one to kind of talk more about how we can actually get that going. They said it's been in discussion for a long time. And so I told them that it would be really good to have this actually happen so that we're not just talking about it anymore because the kids go through grade schools, they get all of the responsive classroom, they're used to it, they know what's going on, they know how to, what, what they're going to get out of it, and they know how to respond to it. And then it's just dropped. They get to the middle high school and there's none of that. And I think that following it through would be a big bonus for behaviors and everything else in the middle high school. And so we're going to talk about that so that we can um, kind of keep it 
pushed through to the middle high school. And then at the very end, we had a fantastic conversation about policy. We got a lot of really good information. We had both principals from the grade schools, David Frazier, and um, from the middle high, we had the guidance counselor, Kim Baker, and assistant principal, Heather Shulman. And I'm not sure if it's something we talked about right this minute or if we talk about it in policy, but they had a lot of fantastic input on that the policy. I don't remember the letters. Charlie, do you remember the letters? Uh, tuition? Yeah, that's one. Tuition. Okay, maybe there's no letters. G C perfect. So you'll record <laughs> right. on that at our yeah, policy. Yeah, so we'll we'll talk about that. Okay. There was a a lot of really good information there. Okay. Anything else, Charlie, that you can Kim, it's, it sounds like you had a really good time. Yeah, I like education. <laughs> it's awesome. It was good. Yeah, well, thanks for that great report. Yeah. Charlie, anything I missed? Hmm? Nope. Okay. She covered it all. She asked good questions, too. <laughs> so nice. policy meetings this Thursday, and now our agenda is set up. <laughs> and goals is going to meet the following Thursday. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Well, great. Um, uh, what about finance committee, Charlie? Uh, we're meeting next week. That was that's thir Thursday at um at one thirty. Ten. Thursday at ten. Thursday at ten. We change our meetings to ten. Okay. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, so communication committee, we have set a date for our first meeting of our second iteration of our committee. So that's really exciting. That will be October 26th at 6 p.m. More than likely in the library room, we will be discussing the website. It's going to be a great time. Come on, hear about the website, make some comments, have some fun. We'll have to worry about the lights turning off. Okay. Great, thank you. And uh, facilities met today. We uh, we had a good meeting. The uh, clerk of the works, uh, Steve uh, Ford, was was there, and went through the progress of the uh, the projects, the two uh, gr uh, grade school projects, and also gave us an update on the. Uh, middle school and high school projects. And everything seems to be uh, on schedule. There are some issues that they are, you know, are gonna have to deal with, but that are not untypical. Issues related to controls in particular are always uh, apparently, uh, you know, significant. And by controls, we mean, you know, the software, hardware interfaces that allow them to set the temperature in any given room and to make adjustments and to be sure that they're accurate. There are uh, a number of issues. Uh, you know, we're continue to be uh, fortunate to have Trey and John um, working on facilities. Um, one of the issues that has been an ongoing issue will continue is the uh, staffing. They, they are short, I think, five people right now. And it's having an impact on those that remain because they feel a sense of pride. They want to keep up with the work and keep things clean. But it's it's stressful when you're short that many people. So, uh, Charlie, do you have anything that you can uh, add? There were a number of other things that we discussed. Um, no, except... Uh... We need to make sure that we get through the winter okay. Um, no, I would just agree with you about the staffing. We need to do what we can to to change practices so that we can uh, bring people on board uh, more easily than what we do today. We, we did have some discussion about school spring and how that can be challenging for the kind of people who might be very good at uh, custodial work, but not, you know, so good with 
using that kind of software interface to uh, to come on. So I think that is certainly a concern that John has. Yeah, just an update on that. Um, I after my I had a morning meeting for the few, first few hours over at uh, Franklin Pierce University relative to some of the work that we're doing together and um, came back and got an update for how things went. So, um, uh, you know, and discussed, you know, of course we've been discussing that a little bit anyway, and not so much the school spring, um, you know, we were saying, is it the right platform? In talking with a couple of different sources, um, I think regardless of the platform, people are having issues getting people because of the digital, partly because of the digital platforms that they're using. Some people are going to Apple Track. Other people are going from Apple Track to School Spring. Everyone's looking for a different answer, a different solution. And so, you know, I talked with uh, HR today, and um, I think we need to have a couple more conversations. But the idea of um, saying, "Listen, we can help these people apply." <laughs> this is if we have to have a digital. There's a reason why there's a digital system, and there's specific types of prompts in there that are important for people to um, complete and so forth. But um, there are parts that are easy to do and there are parts that are more challenging. And the challenging parts, really, we can help people with those um, pieces. The parts that are easier to do are the pieces that they need to do on their own anyway and answer without our meddling. Um, you know, privacy issues and, and things of that nature, and, um, background of, of uh, their criminal history and so forth, things of that nature that everyone has to you know sign off on. Uh, so uh, whether we start to advertise more, you know, with signs and saying call and set up an appointment to come on in or what have you, um, I think it's, it's just about more customer service is what we really need to do. Because we did get, we got a phone call today from someone who want, was interested and uh, Trey was able to walk the individual through, hold the phone, but really... We need more face-to-face -face interaction, I think, in, in that case. Um, yeah, that would be good. Yep. But, so. uh, we, know, we know that uh, having information in the data system and database system. So we know that uh, capturing information into our systems is important because we rely on them to provide us with all kinds of data. But uh, the process of getting that in there does not necessarily have to be from the applicant. The applicant can fill out a piece of paper and that can be keyed in by someone else. Uh, so the, ma the majority of it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's the kind of thing we're looking at is, is removing barriers or making them less than what they are today. And it's not just for one category. It, it's for other categories of personnel as well. One of the big issues with school spring is that there's no way to tell what the priority is and you have 30 pages of information that they're asking you for and it's so overwhelming but the truth is is no we need we need this page you know but there's no way to prioritize like there's no way mm -hmm. here's here's the stuff you have to put in here's the stuff if you get yeah. have it great but there's, there's, again, it's all equitable. So if you have a doctorate and you're applying to be a principal, you're filling out the same form as for as for a custodian. Yeah, you that's know, not, it's very, very user friendly. And if, if there's any way to separate things out and say, here's what we need right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, but when you get into school spring, you can't do that. Right. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. Okay, um, do we have other committee updates? Anybody else have anything else? Uh, I know this week is National Walk to School Week. Volunteering somewhere along the trail. That's on, uh, is that on Wednesday? Yeah. Good. Well, okay. So if there are no more committee updates for the moment, then let's do public comments, number two. Oh, yes. Huh? 
I have a public comment being oh. a member of the public. Good, good. So I'm Leslie McLean from Chapra. <laughs> um, two things. The committee, the um, facility use committee that you're working on, Ruben, that Laurel recommended adding the planning board. Yeah, yeah, the athletics. Athletics. Athletic yeah. fields. Maybe and... the rec departments. Yep. Would be rec departments. Type. And that one is also going to go out to uh, some students as well. So students on that one, that particular one would be fine. Um, probably from middle school, high school age. So those, so it'd be a, a more inclusive of the community because it also could, like you said, the rec department makes complete sense because. The other thing is I'd like to let the board know, well, we're sitting in the dark again. Um, the little shout out to Brock Cullen, Cullen, right? It's Brock's last name. Brock, yes, Cullen. Brock Cullen who is, um, I don't know what his official position is, he's a teacher in the, CTE, in the shop. Yep, yep. The, right. uh, I, I asked him trades. for a personal favor to help me figure out my dad has Alzheimer's and we have a lot of tools we need to get rid of. And he came over and helped me personally with that. And while we were talking in his role as the shop teacher, he said, oh, I would love some of this stuff. And I said, well, we're not ready to donate very expensive tools yet. We may at some point. But he talked about, I could use printed material. Now, I never even thought of this. And my father has this extensive library of construction books and magazines and everything. So we went upstairs, he looked at them all and he said, I want them. And my mom said, sure, you can have them. But I wanted to let you know that Brock, just by being there and talking about it, secured this donation. I just wanted to make sure you knew that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yep. right, and right. he, after the library, um, does its coding of everything. Um, it will go into the actual shop. So it will be there. So it'll be a classroom library. Will they build a bookshelf for them? <laughs> Maybe. I think he has a couple. Good. All right. So that was our one member of the public that is physically here. Um, also wanted to offer an opportunity to the one person that is remotely here. If you'd like to make a public comment, you're a frequent flyer and I believe you know how to do so, but if you would like to uh, make a public comment, uh, first name, last name, town of residence, and uh, use the hand raise feature at the bottom of your screen. All right, I think we're all set on that end as well. Okay, very good. Are there any uh, board matters that anyone would like to bring forward? So the board was emailed today um, with an information uh, regarding the SAFE grant. I don't know if you had the opportunity to see that. Uh, it was something that we had wanted to put on earlier. It didn't get on here. Um, this is what we've talked about, I, I don't know, probably for a month now, of receiving the SAFE grant for the middle school and the Conan High School. The Conan High School is in the uh, amount of 89000 and change, so 89272 And the middle school was in the amount of... I think it was 70 something, let me see. Seventy thousand five hundred fifty-four. Yep. So five. So those two combined uh were the grants that we were awarded. We are still waiting to hear back for the two elementary schools. Uh, but of course, anything that comes in, uh the board would have to accept. Um so if we could have a motion to accept the safe grant uh, funding, that would be fantastic. And to be able to uh, expend it in accordance with um, the grant application. It has, it has to, I, I mean, we, we've already started, I think, right? The, the, we can't actually do it. Right, so it's proof, but we put it. We we were told that it needed to be verbatim. What well, we yes. Yeah. So it's it's a little hard to hear. So these are 
currently imminent? Is that what you're saying? That these are that we've got. It's been do? given to us. I mean, we can't utilize it because the board hasn't accepted it. You know, we typically accept at uh, at the beginning of the year. We say we accept the title funds, the title two funds, all these kind of things that we can utilize. This is something new uh, that we just got a month ago, and so we are. It is in the grant management system. That is how it will be um, used and operated and. Uh, however, and I think we have already started to put in the language into the grant application. We can't, of course, submit it because we don't have permission um, by the board. The board would have to accept the funds. I'll make a motion to accept the funds of these two grants. I second the motion. Okay. Is there any discussion? Yes. When we were in facilities today, all right, we talked about the delay between the approval of the grant and the ability to go to the vendors. And uh, Carrie said that was about a three week delay. And so we were going to bring that up at the facilities meeting next week. Uh, process wise, is there a reason why, uh, once we know it's approved and the board approves it, uh, the facilities manager can't start going out bids and that kind of work. No, there's no, there would be no reason. So, actually, but, uh, from what I understand, is that the facilities manager, I mean, he had to get the quotes in the first place to even get some of these numbers so we could put in there. So, he didn't have, he didn't have anything more than quotes originally, but he knows the vendors that he can go to if, and, and if there's a, a area where we have to go to bid, then, you know, he has to do that. So, there's no, nothing to stop. Okay, so our approval tonight means he can he can get he can get moving. Start on everything. Yep. Okay. And we have to spend the money uh, this by December twenty twenty four, I believe, right? Yeah. The activity. Yes, but he but he he can yes, mm -hmm. but they have approved the grant. As long as we are putting in exactly what we had, the the likelihood's extremely high that they're going to approve our, I mean, substantially approve it, meaning the, the concept is approved. They might uh, not approve it until we get all our budget codes correct and everything like that, but that's just a matter of time. It doesn't mean he can't go and start to pursue it. We can talk about the timing. It, it wouldn't... We, Right, but he, he would still need to go and make sure that he that the funding is like he, if he has a vendor, for instance, that can come on in and do some doors, you know, he would need to let them know that the board has approved this funding. We want to go forward. Let's start getting the information in while we're simultaneously getting the grant approved. In line with that, do either of these funding amounts require a bid process? I don't think, well, if if we were spending all of that on one thing, then yes, um, but it's uh, talking, there's several pieces to this, so it all depends, but if it does, then we'll have to either do it or we'll have to come back and waive it um, officially by the board. So... Do we have a motion? Yeah, we do. A motion a second. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So having a motion, if there's no more discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. So uh, that's good. And uh, are there any other board matters that you'd like to raise? You no know, future items that we uh, need to deal with at the moment, then the last thing we would need would be a motion to adjourn. Okay. Thank you, Daisy. Second. And Kim, thank you. I'll make a motion to, after that, to go into non public. For All those in favor of adjourning, so say aye. 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 Okay, good. Now you're making a motion. Lisa, to non-public for purposes of reputation. 
purposes of what? Reputation. I think that. Okay. Uh, all, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. So. I made the motion. Daisy, did you second? I just, I just have a point of order. Um, does that have to be posted? A non public, yes. Yeah. I think the board can add a non public anytime it wants to within the meeting. Usually it's voted on to go into there and prior to exiting um well no because we we enter into non-public then you come back into public session and then adjourn is usually what happens um it's this is you know if if we don't want to do that um i i think we get by without one i just asked a question because yep. i don't know i believe I believe you're. I believe you're allowed to add the non-public. Yeah, you can have a non-public all by itself. So. Yeah. No, my question was. No, my question was posted. Does it have to be in the meeting? Does it have to be? Does the meeting happen? Does it not have a meeting? Correct. 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 Uh, well, I don't know the answer, so. Yeah, I don't have a firm answer to whether or not. So let's do it and ask for forgiveness later. I don't know. Yeah, I, I just I just think we go into non-public prior to exiting the meeting is yeah. my my point. Yes. We have posted an official meeting. Yes. Yeah. have noticed that you will be here meeting, you haven't, there was no notice of the official model. Uh, so. Four minutes, one after you have the motion, it gets always a non yeah. Yes. And the insurance Afterwards. I'm going to remove the you just did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. No, we can go, no. We can adjourn from a public meeting. We can go into a non-public meeting. Adjourn from that. We do not. The only reason we need to be in a public meeting is if we're going to seal minutes. Okay, so you can't seal the minutes from in a, in a non-public meeting. So if people don't want to adjourn the public meeting because you may have to uh, seal the minutes from the non-public meeting, then we wouldn't do that. So the answer to the question is, you're probably right. We probably should not adjourn to form the public meeting if we're going to seal the minutes of the non-public. I don't know what the non-public is, so I don't know. 